Right, so it's day 98 of my attempt to plant a tree for every single day of 2023. Um, and it is Easter Saturday, so let's get on with it. Right, so anyone who watched yesterday's planting will actually know that that planting was in slight reference to a birthday in the family. Um, and today is actually another birthday in the family of another, another of the relatively few members of the family that I have been in regular contact with through my life. So uh, I do have a story involving a tree from that family member's history, but I suspect that was not a happy story for them. Um, and it doesn't help that the only analog for that tree that I can find locally uh, is not one that I intend to plant because it is one that tends to exacerbate uh, drying out during droughts uh, and Zambia is pretty drought prone and I don't want to be encouraging drying out any more than is absolutely necessary. This is why I do not plant eucalyptus. So I will just be wishing that relative a happy birthday and moving on swiftly and without delay. Today's tree actually relates in some ways to me a little bit more because as my parents are from two radically different cultures I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for hybrid trees and this is a hybrid Bauhinia. So this is Bauhinia ex Blakeyana which is a sterile hybrid which is particularly useful because some of the Bauhinias have a real tendency to become invasive in disturbed areas. And as much as I do like Bauhinia virigata I do have to admit that in Cop Belt in further north in Zambia uh, that species is quite invasive. This cannot become invasive because it doesn't produce pods at all. So this is actually the national flower of Hong Kong as far as I know. Um, and it is a beautiful purple flower and it is produced at quite a different time of year to Bauhinia variegata which means that a lot of the pollinators of Bauhinia variegata and of the native Bauhinias will have a food source at, at a time of year when they don't normally have one here. Uh, which should mean that our populations of things like sunbirds and some of the butterflies should be a little bit more stable and it should sort of offset a little bit of the habitat loss happening around as Lusaka spreads ever further eastward. So this tree is actually going to be doing one other thing for me as well, which is not so much to do with the tree, so much to do with where I'm planting it. So this is going actually in what I'm going to call a void in one of our mango trees. And that is basically an area where the mango tree just doesn't produce much fruit. It's generally a very reliable fruit of this mango tree, but on one side it doesn't. And that side is southeast, which is the direction the wind tends to come from. And as mangoes flower and begin to set fruit right in the hottest part of the dry season, um, that dry wind coming through can dry out and kill a lot of flowers and it can also lead to the sort of collapse of a lot of the young fruit developing. If it just gets too hot and too dry, that wind's just going to blow in and just kill those. And I do find planting something right next to a void in a mango tree can lead to really improved fruiting right around that. And this will need pruning because if something gets too big and it's right in the canopy of the mango tree, it is going to end up sort of rubbing against the branches, knocking off developing fruits, knocking off flowers, and eventually shading out parts of the mango tree that would need a little bit more air and a little bit more light to set fruit, and even potentially blocking pollinators from getting to insects. So this will need management, but hopefully with just a little bit of pruning, it should both improve the soil and greatly improve the fruiting on this tree. That is going in with a Dracaena fragrance, which will be a little marker and a little bit of a shader for it uh, while it's still young and tender. Uh, the leaves of the Dracaena should eventually fall off and form quite a nice mulch around its base too. It's also going with an aloe arborescens, which is the current aloe, which is one that is, forms nice dense thickets which should keep the base of it cool even in hot weather um, and keep it from drying out too much around the base. And finally it's going to go in with some Calanco Fetchenkoi, which is a Madagascan uh, succulent, called, sometimes called lavender scallops which produces wonderful red flowers, which are great for pollinators, but it also is quite toxic, so it should limit the number of insects that climb up onto the tree that come along the ground and climb onto it, because a lot of them will find the calico instead, and so they will not then move onto the tree. There are a whole bunch of insects that do feed on Bauhinias here, and I am very happy for them to do that, because they provide a resource for an awful lot of beneficial predators, so spiders and some of the predatory mantises and some of the birds will be eating the larvae of those beetles as they go around munching on the Bauhinia, but if there's too many, they will overwhelm the Bauhinia, so it's very good to plant something toxic, which just limits the number that go on, and if they fall off, if they're more likely to not rediscover it very readily, and you just slightly improve the health of the tree that way. So yes, yeah, so that should be everything for today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a very happy Easter. I will be filming a review tomorrow, probably. I didn't film one today. I'm not going to be uploading the one I filmed last week. I think I'm going to go to a two-weekly schedule and see if it's worth going down to a monthly schedule uh, just for editing time. Um, and yeah, please tune in again tomorrow if you aren't too busy eating chocolate. Uh, but no worries if you are.